this is not, well, there's never a good time to have a DUI in this day and age. I've said it recently. We've covered Patrick Mahomes Sr. facing felony DUI, third offense, up to 10 years. There's no excuse for it. We're all carrying around a device that has a button on it that allows us to summon a car anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Devondre Sweat, formerly of the University of Texas, arrested for DWI at 2.12 p.m. Eastern, or not Eastern, local time on Sunday. He's a projected day two pick. I, I just, I, again, there... I understand that when you consume alcohol, your brain becomes impaired, but you have to be really impaired to not realize there's an easier way to get to where I'm going. And I think people just decide to roll the dice in that setting. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. You might not be fine. And somebody outside of your vehicle or somebody else in your vehicle might not be fine. If you can't operate this multiple thousand pound machine made of steel in the proper way, it just astounds me today. You don't have to hitchhike. You don't have to call anybody. You just pick up your damn phone and hit a button and somebody will come get you. When in doubt, press that button. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, it it, it definitely is. It's it's definitely going to hurt Devondre Sweat. That's what that's what stinks. This is a guy that, you know, I, I think needed some some positive stuff for him as far as the draft is concerned. Right, I mean, he was a guy that kind of started out, hey, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, oh, he's going to go in the first round. You know, I, I think people started to unpack his film a little bit and were like, wait, there's no way he should have been the Big 12 Defensive Player, and he's not a first-rounder. So that hurt. He goes to the Senior Bowl. He doesn't want to weigh in, right? Oh, gosh, big, really big guy, like really big guy who now is scared to weigh in. You know that's going to scare teams, right, Mike? I mean, oh, no, now they're going, wait, this is the kind of guy like he has one bad week and all of a sudden, wait, his body's out of control and he can't move the same way and whatever else. That didn't help, you know? Goes to the combine, has a pretty good showing, does all of that, but then you have this on top of everything. Yeah, this is – now you go, well, I hope you go day two because now you might have got pushed into day three with this right here, and, and that's where it'll, it'll hurt Devondre Sweat. Yeah, this becomes a basic question of whether or not he can exercise good judgment at all times. You're three weeks from the draft. There's never a good time for something like this. It should never happen, but to have it happen – as you're in the final days before someone is going to pick you, hopefully as high as possible, this isn't the thing to do. And the other side of it as well, you know, usually the excuse given when they pull someone over that they suspect of DUI is I had a couple beers or I had one beer, you know, it's some, some low amount. When you're 366, to get to the point where you would be running a foul of the 0.08% BAC, you've all seen those charts, and it's all driven by, your BAC is driven by your body size and your weight. Now, how you tolerate it is differently. Some people can have one drink and they're loopy, even if their BAC would not be in excess of the minimum. To get to 0.08 if you're 366 pounds, that's a lot of beers or whatever it was he was drinking. That's a lot of alcohol in a 366-pound body to get the concentration of it in your bloodstream at 0.08%. So so he he was, Chris, he was pounding them to be over the limit at 366. Yeah. I, I mean, pounding them in, by, in the afternoon, right? That, that That's not going to help them either, honestly. You know, I, you know, really, teams would probably be like, they'd probably rather that happened at 2 a.m. in the morning rather than going, wait. He was drinking like that at noon or 11.30 he started before that. Uh, yeah, not a good look for him. Definitely not. You know, it stinks. And yeah, now he's going to have to answer these questions. And I, I would expect, yeah, this is going to hurt him for sure. It's going to fall down for the reasons you said. It's just a litmus test of wait. Okay, wait. How how real is he about his his job and his profession? And how is he taking this on? Wait, he he must have you know got out of shape or or got too much weight before the Senior Bowl. That's one blinking light. And now here we are again with another blinking light. It's, it's going to scare teams that that wanted to maybe take him late in the second, early third round. Well, and what it does it. It sparks an avalanche of questions yeah. that he's now going to have to face. Right. The questions we have are questions teams will have. How did you even get in a position where you were driving over the limit 
at 2.12 in the afternoon on a Sunday. Where were you? How much did you drink? And see, if he better get smart here quickly, too, because if you try to play games here, that's going to make your stock go even farther yeah, south. Right. Because it's undeniable. If he is over the limit of .08, he, is, he has had a lot of alcohol to get his body to that point. It's not something that just spontaneously happens if you take a sip of beer. It is a, it is a physiological reality of how alcohol is processed in the bloodstream and how much of it affects you based upon how much you weigh. The bigger you are, the more it takes, period. So he better get today or yesterday, ideally, his, his story, hopefully the truth, ironed out and prepared to answer these questions because the questions are going to come. Anybody that was thinking about drafting him owes it to themselves now to ask those questions because I, I remember there was a player back almost 20 years ago. Remember Corin Robinson, top 10 pick of the Seahawks? Yeah, wide receiver, yeah. And he had some, yeah. he had like, he was with the Vikings and he was in this high-speed car chase and there were some off-field issues and there was a DUI at some point. And, and somebody asked Ted Thompson, the GM of the Packers, once they gave him what was his most recent second chance, basically, why are you bringing somebody to town that could kill somebody? I, I mean, it, it, was, it was kind of a crass, blunt question, but think about it. These teams present themselves as you know, responsible members of the community. If you've got a guy who was driving drunk, allegedly, at 2.12 in the afternoon on a Sunday and weighs 366 pounds and had to drink a hell of a lot of booze to get to that point, you better do your due diligence and make sure you're not bringing to town somebody who's going to do that on the streets of your community. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to sell yourself as a corporate citizen that is responsible in the community whose name you carry on your team, you owe it to whoever ends up on the wrong side of that exchange, potentially, to be damn sure it's not going to happen in your town. Yeah, that's right. That's where we get into part of like, hey, they built a good culture, right? They got guys that fit their culture. That's that conversation there. And yes, that, that, that's, again, and it's not only what you're talking about, human decency, decency to the community, thinking about that, it's, wait, are we going to make an investment in this guy and actually pay him? Are we going to depend on him to be our backup defensive tackle this year? I don't know. Can we depend on that? Because you know, what if he does something like this week? So that that's again, as we always know, you know, NFL coaches, GMs, front office, they're 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 pretty conservative people by nature, and yeah, they're not going to love this. It's it's their own butts on the line here when you associate with something like this, and that's going to scare some of these GMs to death with this situation. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.